Today is one of our last days of our 30 days road trip through Kenya. And believe me, so far it was a hell of an adventure with so many experiences, great memories, highlights and also lessons. Lessons I have learned about Kenya, traveling in Africa and yeah, also about myself. of sharing with you what we have learned in this 30 days road trip through Kenya at least like seven or maybe eight lessons because I am sure when you are traveling through Kenya you will oh I wish I would have known that earlier excited then follow me on my journey of making the impossible possible traveling full-time as a single mom with my baby through Kenya and becoming a travel influencer who supports over 1 million travelers in planning their trip to Kenya. Hit the subscribe button if you want to support this mission. Good morning! <laughs> Sorry, <I> <laughs> so, unfortunately today, let me get you out and show you around. We had to cancel our safari in the morning, which I mean is okay, but uh, my client, she's not feeling well. So I think a good tip, ah, morning world. <laughs> so I think a good advice is always if you carry your own medication, like it's really common that you can get some diarrhea or also headache and this kind of thing. So having some um, traveler's diarrhea is something we usually experience because even if you watch out what you eat and what you drink still the food is very different and then the stress of traveling um, and the weather change so people do get sick very often while traveling in Kenya the first few days so just pack some of the medicine for diarrhea um, painkillers and um, yeah you'll be good to go and then don't forget to take care of yourself and say okay Yes, I'm sick and I might miss out this safari, but that's okay. You are here because of yourself. You need to make sure that you are okay. So, let me enjoy my day here. <laughs> and what was very cool early, early today morning, but of course I could not capture that in a video. Um, when I was waking up and was looking for my client, I saw a giraffe just here in the tent, in our camp, walking around. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're waking up and then you hear a giraffe. I was like, what is this animal first? <laughs> but it was a giraffe. <laughs> Poor guys, what a safari. <laughs> and let me tell you something like which I didn't know before and also like when I started traveling in Kenya I used to be a very very low budget traveler and just because I mean you guys know going on safari can be really expensive and then you try to go with the cheapest of the cheapest or you do a Ooh, dog? No lion dog, dog and pig. It's like hello. <laughs> so funny there's a pig here so anyway <laughs> i used to do really low budget safaris but what i wasn't aware of that actually the quality and your experience of the safari really depends on your guide and in kenya we do have different qualities of guides and of course if you choose the cheapest safaris or this low budget safaris it is possible i'm not saying all of them but it's possible that maybe they are not that advanced as the ones if you choose a private safari so guys see who i just met i actually wanted to go to our room so this is sophia is that correct yeah sophia luca <laughs> sophia luca let's go in front of here so he was our guide today um, when we were going to the Maasai village, which is just around the corner here. And this is another tip which I didn't know when I started traveling in Kenya, that when you choose like this mainstream safari tour operators or also camps, they send you to a Maasai village, but then it's like a mainstream Maasai village which might be set up for tourists only. Like you end up being there one out of a hundred and then they just push you to sell or to buy their ornaments and things. But with him, <laughs> that's why we actually chose to come to this camp here. Because 
they work with the Maasai villages around and we had such a great experiences and um, yeah so it's very important if you want to do this in a way that it's real and authentic that you choose the right tour operator you travel with and also maybe the camp like the camp we are staying in here like maybe you can already see the bonfire behind me so this is a camp which works with the Maasai villages and um, yeah so they are the ones who organize these cultural experiences for you okay let me go bye bye. <laughs> see, you. see you when you see me if you are traveling you go on safari especially for the early morning game drives and the evenings or if you go to a cold place like this here <laughs> in Akuru then always wear at least one heavy jumper like the one I'm wearing here one is completely enough that's fine and as well additionally wait I have this what is it like a Maasai Shuka can you see so just a scarf or something you can wear on top especially if you're going on early morning game drives and evening game drives it can be a bit cozy and it's just super handsome it can be also used for blankets yeah so that's always what I have just in case it gets too cold So what I have learned today from our trip today, especially, and I can recommend that to any, any traveler who is planning their itinerary, that actually we ended up like canceling one activity. And I see that in so many travelers who are planning their trip in Kenya and they come and ask me, Senior, what should I do? Can you help me to plan my trip? I want to do this, 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 this. They go from safari to safari, from park to park. But at the end of the day, the problem is that we as tourists, I mean, of course you guys know I live here, but also myself when I'm here exploring, you want to do so many things. You want to explore everything at the same time and it's not possible. So what I always say is also you book your safari up front, you plan your safari, but please leave some space in between to relax and just to chill out maybe at the pool just for you for your system also to come down or some flexible days where you can say while you're there on spot you have like a top three list and say okay I could do this activity this activity and this activity and while you are there you can book it on top <laughs> wonderful good morning Zai, say good morning <laughs> so we actually just took a morning walk with elephants, baby elephants, but they're quite big. So one of the lessons I have learned while traveling now for the last, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks in Kenya on our 30 days road trip is that you cannot plan the most beautiful things ever. Yes, you plan your safari and even here we are in Riteti, we stay here for now three nights already. Wow, we stayed here for three nights and it's so beautiful to be with the baby elephants and baby giraffes and all these things. But still, the most beautiful things happened and planned. Like yesterday evening, we took a walk. We went into the football field around down there where they train, like the keepers and the rangers from Reteti here. They train, they play football. Then on the way back, we saw so many baby elephants. We were literally walking outside with them. Outside? <laughs> so I think this is some things that just happened which cannot be planned and then the other day um, we just arrived in a woman's only village before we came here and because the park right now it's super super dry here in northern Kenya there's no rain so what happened is that elephants are coming out up to the river to the woman's only village because they're thirsty and one elephant came so super super close and greeted us Okay, this guy is insane. That elephant is just close to me. Can you see him behind me? And there is no fence, nothing between us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo, wonderful good morning. Another day, another place. We are here. Wow, as you can see, at a really different place. Behind me, whoop, 
is the famous Ark. And the Ark is famous for that you can actually go on a game drive and see all the animals without going on a game drive. And it's stunning because you just sit there while having breakfast, dinner, lunch and all the elephants are there. But it is a bit cold. And what I did not know, and a lesson I learned is, apart from that it's cold, we have this already, that Kenya can be so, so super green. Like, look at this. The nature in Kenya can change all over. Like, you can really find anything from the dry, yeah, it was so dry and hot. Samburu, where we came from, the beautiful sunrises in the morning. Now here, in the tropical rainforest in Kenya. So, this is also a message for you. If you want to come to Kenya, make your research, think about it exactly. Are you more like the nature type? Like you want things like this, where you can just sit and enjoy and have, see the elephants passing while you are there having breakfast or dinner or sipping on your beer or whatever. Or are you the type who wants to be in the dry, hot, real Africa feeding, Northern Kenya, Samburu? Like, ask yourself these questions because Kenya can give you literally everything you want and you need but you have to tell the two operators or for you to make the right decision you have to know first like what is it you want to experience and i like having all of it <laughs> that's why um, we are traveling 30 days with my client currently and also for her it's so difficult to choose like what she likes most because everything is so different so guys anyway that was it from today's video and if you liked it give it a like comment down below and yeah just let me know how I can help you to plan your upcoming trip to Kenya or what else you need to know like what is it you want me to make videos about what do you want to see from my life from myself from Kenya or my cute little baby boy here Zahi <laughs> yeah just comment down below and ask we are going to clean up that mess you can see here and uh, travel to Nairobi before we hit the roads, no, the airplane to the coast. Bye bye!